So there's little question that improvements were made to the front axle of the Jeep JL Wrangler. It certainly has bigger end forgings, way bigger than you found on a JK. It has beefed up brackets, and certainly the tube diameter is a lot larger. But the real question that needs to be asked is, how much better is it really? So even though both on the Sport and Sahara and Rubicon, uh, factory axles they have a larger diameter tube these are now what uh, two and this is two and three quarter now whereas the jk was two and a half right so they did increase the diameter and that's 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 better no question about it and they did increase the wall thickness that's better the question is is it enough is it enough for what a lot of the rest of us are trying to do with the jeep so some of you guys have seen online instagram other social media sites including our forum there have been a few breaks that have already occurred on these housings and surprisingly, both to the tube and across, what would you say? This is like the, for the FAD unit? Front axle disconnect housing. And if you guys have seen it, uh, we'll post up a picture in a second. There was a big crack that kind of came across through this plug weld or rosette weld and just came across the top. And so even though this is a better housing, the question is, is how much better can it really be? That's a good point. So there's a couple things that really affect, you know, housing rigidity, right? One is the tubing that you use. And that, while it's bigger and thicker, it's offset to a certain extent because the axle housing is wider. And how much wider are we talking about now? Uh, so the stock JKs were 65 and a half and a Rubicon is now 67 point uh, eight, I believe. So it's just almost 68 inches. So it's almost a full width axle. Right. So that's that's a good point. So you know our Pro Rock 60s that we've built for many years were 68 and a half. So JK's got wider, and the car's wider. So it made sense, right? But you know you have to look at each one of these legs as a little bit of a lever. With here, here's a fulcrum. You have a tire that's out here. As that tire pushes up, it pivots off the fulcrum and is trying to bend this area of the the housing. Same on this side. So here's a fulcrum. Now this is a little closer in because this casting is big and absorbs a lot of that force. But on this side, we don't have as much material to absorb that force and it's a, a longer stretch. So you end up with, you know, as this is being pushed upward, this is being pushed downward and it's trying to fold that. And that's what's causing some of those failures that you see. Sure, so even I'm looking here on the 186, uh, which you, or basically a Dana 30, this is the open end of the FAD unit. Right. So there's not a whole lot of structural rigidity right here in this open end, I would assume. No, it's, it's, you know, it's been designed, I'm sure, very well for you know, a Rubicon with stock tires and maybe 35s and reasonable trail, trail use and trail riding and, and off-roading. But you know, as suspensions improve, a lot of times there's more forces taking place down here. We're going over rough roads and because we have this plusher suspension, we don't realize how much punishment the axle still having to absorb. So the suspension didn't really make things better for the axle, they just made things nicer for us sitting in the, in the comfortable seats. So there's a lot more forces happening as the, as the vehicle's going faster and impacting rocks or ruts or uh, even just a drainage ditch in, on a street, right? So there's, there's a design envelope that the factory is uh, satisfying, but a lot of our off-road use is well beyond that. Okay, so obviously these are better, than what we had on the JK. Let's go take a look at the Pro Rock 44. Sure. So obviously this isn't exactly the cheapest uh, modification you can make for your Jeep, but for those of you guys who are actually using them, playing hard on the rocks, or in our case, bombing your way across the desert, can you tell us some of the features that make this a superior option? Yeah, so the Pro Rock 44 has been around since 2008, uh, and we developed it you know, intentionally for JK use and it was designed to fix all those issues with housing bending and end forging bending, as well as provide stronger gear sets, a beefier housing, higher ground clearance, and a number of other features. So what's different for the JL are the brackets are different, but they're still heavy duty thick brackets just like we had before. The end forging that we designed is a lot beefier than the stock part. Uh, we added more material in critical areas, but we also added some features to keep the weight out of it. We didn't want to make the thing a giant chunk of metal. Adding material to improve strength is a good thing, but being ridiculous is not necessarily helpful. So we, we tried to be efficient in the way we designed this. 
The ground clearance of the Pro Rock 44 is really legendary, so nothing else has this, this high level of ground clearance. And it's not just the ultimate ground clearance at the very bottom, but it's the whole cross section. Rocks are coming at your housing like this, and so we reduced this whole frontal area to reduce impact with rocks. And, and Eddie, you've even shown videos of one vehicle equipped with a Pro Rock going over an obstacle without touching it, and other ones just getting caught right on it. So we know there's a big benefit to that, and I've seen it many times on the trail too. The housing itself has a lot more rigidity to it, so that holds the gear in a better, tighter mesh. And so when you get deflection from forces that uh, the engine twisting the drive shaft and the wheels resisting, then the gears can't push apart and they maintain their gear pattern and it, and it improves gear life. Some of the other features I know that some axles have drain plugs down here. Like the factory. Like the factory. <laughs> I personally have no, not seen anybody have good luck with that. Eventually, a rock will unscrew it, and when it unscrews it, you will lose all the oil. You probably won't realize you've lost all the oil until the axle seizes up completely and you come to a screeching halt. So I, we just avoided that. The whole bottom of the Pro Rock 44 is smooth. It's designed to allow objects that do make contact with it to glance off and roll off on, from and as we move forward. Even if we're backing up, same thing. We want to just move freely in an obstacle environment. Do you, um, do you have an actual number as to how much better ground clearance um, this axle has versus like a factory for, uh, 44 or the Rubicon? So it's about, it's about a half inch better than a, or three eighths of an inch to a half inch better than a standard 44. Okay. Uh, the JL44, I haven't actually gotten a good model of that, so I can't really tell you exactly. But I think that, uh, as you can see, it's this reduction in frontal area that we have. So it's not necessarily just the ultimate space that you gain at the bottom. It's really the full frontal area that you gain. And so the, the broader bottom on the 44 of the JL obviously is going to have more probability of impacting an obstacle. Right.